You know, <laughs> given the, I don't even know what you want to call it, lip service that we heard from some others of, well, you know, the last few weeks, they, you know, you know, I, th- I think we proved that, that we can be a pretty good team. No. I don't care about the last few weeks. I care about the last few months. I care about the next few weeks. You're not playing in the playoffs. That's what I care about. That's what you need to figure out. This is just fool's gold to me. You know, in some ways, it's reminiscent to like what the Steelers did this year with Mason Rudolph. Yeah, they got hot. It was a nice end of the year. They were able to get into the playoffs, but ultimately they weren't a real threat. And this team didn't even get to that point where they got into the playoffs. Maybe if they did, who knows? If they were playing better. But this isn't this didn't look like a playoff team throughout the course of this year. Really at any point, even in the last two and a half weeks, it just you know, it, it, it's like the Pirates in September when they're out of the race. All of a sudden they start playing well. That happens every year, doesn't it? Once they're out of the race, all of a sudden, while the pressure's off, we may as well just go out there and play, and guess what? You start winning. Other teams may be gripping their sticks a little bit, what have you. And it's refreshing, I guess, to hear somebody at least relatively admit to the problem, the elephant in the room. This team has been for a while now run by the players the decisions that have been made have been dictated by the players I don't think Sidney Crosby shouldn't have a voice in some of the moves that are made I think Sidney Crosby given his status has earned the right to have input I don't think that they need to bow down to everything that Sidney Crosby wants and desires because he's emotionally attached to certain people within the organization. Listen, Crosby wants to win. I get it. It's the most important thing in the world to him. I get that. I believe that in my heart. I also think that there can be times where you are blinded by the good in front of you, by the good things, the things that make you feel good, and it gets in the way of the betterment of the overall. That happens. That's life. That happens in a lot of things that happen in life. There are times where you think that you know what the right way forward is because you're, the, the sentimentality, the emotional attachment to it, whatever. But deep down, that's a flawed mentality to have. And living in that world of, well, Jake got traded. I'm not going to play hard tonight. Whether you think that on the surface, whether that's bubbling below the surface, you could hear Lars Eller say it there. He did not recognize the team around the trade deadline and around the trade of Jake Gensel. Who the hell is Jake Gensel to force an entire team into a depressed state of terrible hockey for a month? Listen, he's a really good player. He's not their dad. He's not their brother. He's a coworker. I just had a coworker and friend move. Guess what? I went to work the next day and did my job exactly the same as I did the day before he moved. Didn't it, it didn't affect my work. You have to be a professional at some point here. And this was a lack of professionalism from a group of old guys. Look, if they're 19 years old and they're playing juniors and you're really attached and the one guy leaves and you, you're bummed out about it, maybe it affects you, whatever. This isn't their first trade deadline. They've had guys traded before. They've seen players leave for free agency. You're telling me that Jake Gensel, was it the milkshakes? What was it? What made Jake Gensel so incredibly vital 
to the emotional well-being of the old Pittsburgh Penguins that they just went in a collective tank because he got traded. To me, there's one word that I could use to describe that mindset if that's how it went. And again, this is a player saying that this is how it went. That one word is pathetic. That is a pathetic, a pathetic result of a trade deadline that you collectively said, well, we sold at the deadline. We may as well go in the tank.